Or connect. maybe grandma was going on the trip and she died the day before you leave. Right. Yeah. And now you're, no one's going. Right. Yeah. Unless, unless her last words were just go on the trip. It was, <laughs> that was actually what the last thing she said was, it was exactly book the right. trip to the Maldives. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I heard. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't tell if it was like respiratory last breath or book a trip to the, all right, this really went. <laughs> <laughs> Really dark. My God. <laughs> hey there, adventurers. Welcome to Let's Just Go Podcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Kayla. And today we're talking about... Uh, I would call it a hot topic, maybe. Well, yeah, I'd call it a hot topic. That's uh, travel protection. And if you need it, why you need it, the importance of it, yeah, so I on think and so forth. People are like, oh, I don't need it. I'm good. I'm not going to get sick. Right? I think that uh, this back-to-back hurricanes say otherwise. And, and how many times have we heard that? Like, oh, it's not going to yeah. happen. I mean, it's the exact reason... You have car insurance and health insurance and insurance. Is, insurance. Yeah, is for you. You have it, and you hope you never need it, right? Yeah. I mean, and when you need it, it's really nice to have because yeah. all of that stuff costs a lot of money. Yeah. So I think one of the questions we get a lot though is, what does it cover? Right. Right. People are like, do I actually need travel insurance? Uh, or a vacation protection plan. I mean, there's a couple different, you know, na- nomenclatures Names. that, yeah, that go with yeah. travel insurance. But so when you travel domestically, Kayla, do you purchase travel insurance? I actually have an annual plan because I travel so much. Me too. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it's more cost effective for me to have an annual plan than it is to buy individual protection for every trip that I have. That being said, if you have an annual plan, there are caps. So it's not like you're covered for every single trip. That, like you are until you have to use it. And then as you use it, you're sort of depleting a pool of funds. Yeah. And the funds are much lower. I mean, the, the, the thresholds are lower than if you bought individually for each trip. Um, yeah. But similarly, I have that. So as well, domestic travel is probably where people get confused the most. Because first of all, let's talk about, well, what is travel insurance and what I need it if I'm traveling domestically? Um, there are two components of travel insurance that I always think about. One is just trip insurance, right? Canceled mm-hmm. flights, lost luggage, need, um, mm-hmm. you know, need to book a flight to come back home. And these are the things people don't think trip about. Trip interruption. Trip interruption is yeah. the uh, official name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trip interruption, right? Great, great grandma dies back at home. And now mm-hmm. shit, you gotta, you gotta leave mid trip. And maybe mm-hmm. the whole family is, maybe not. Maybe it's just you. You're going to leave the spouse and kids there, where, whatever it might be. Or maybe um, grandma was going on the trip and she died the day before you leave. Right. Yeah. And now you're, no one's going. Right. Yeah. Unless unless her last words were just go on the just trip. Just go on the trip. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're going, but also you still want to get refunded for hers. Did she did you have travel protection for her? Right. <laughs> trip protection, right? Which is often what people think about with travel insurance. Or yeah. maybe not, but um then the other division of that is all the medical coverage, right? That you might need um reparation of remains, <laughs> whatever that horrible <laughs> language is. But different yeah. things, right? I mean, it could be something as simple as going to the doctor, maybe helping offset. You're, you're likely out of network, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so for the domestic travel, though, a lot of times people are like, mm, I'll take my chances on the trip part and my medical still covered by my care and health insurance. So I don't yeah. necessarily really need it. But I always caution people to think about all those trip things like we just talked about, right? Sometimes it has nothing to do with you and it might have something to do with other people back at home. It's a lot of the weather. You mentioned the two hurricanes, exactly, that just came through Florida. I mean, snow. 
in the winter, right, winter weather, lots of things that could impact, right? Or you have a non-refundable trip now and the snow, a snowstorm happens, you have to leave the next day now. You're going to get there. Your six-day trip just became five, but okay, fine. It's annoying, but you're at least getting most of it. But you're not going to get refunded for your first night of your hotel and you missed a excursion that you booked you know, skiing for a thousand dollars for the family, and that's not going to be refundable either. So now you're out this money that the trip insurance could potentially um, help offset that money that you're not getting back because you've missed experiences now due to the weather. So uh, all of that is an option, right? I mean, so kind of weighing out what you need it for. Now, um, the international travel. Without a doubt, you need it. Hands down. Why? Because 99.9% of people's health insurance doesn't leave the States, Mm -hmm. right? And so as soon as you step onto that cruise ship or as soon as you, you know, land in a um, different country, your health insurance is not applicable. Even sometimes cruise ships, even if they stay domestic or they're at a domestic port, sometimes cruise ships don't, aren't covered anyway. And they're expensive. Like it's expensive to even be seen on a cruise ship. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Um, you know, and we've, we, you and I have been in the travel industry for quite a bit. We've, we've seen and heard quite the horror stories. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think for the medical piece, number one, first and foremost, if you're in an emergent situation internationally (laughs) where (laughs) there's language barriers, what, what is do you know what, what's the one thing Americans think? Well, there's too many things. <laughs> they, they assume everyone's going to speak English. They assume everyone's going to speak English. <laughs> and that their medical rights are the same that we have in the, in the States, yeah. which is show up, get treated, bill later. Mm-hmm. That is not the case in every country. No. And they want money up front potentially, right? So... Who's dropping 30 grand for you to have, you know, open heart surgery because you're in the middle of a heart attack in Jamaica, right? So you want, you want that hospital and the travel insurance company conversing immediately and dealing while you're not thinking straight because you're in a traumatic situation, right? Because a loved one is, you know, having an emergency. So it's a lot to... To think about and it's not anything anyone ever wants to use but that aspect and a cruise ship you mentioned the cruise ship yeah when people tell me they don't want insurance and they're going on a cruise ship a piece of me it's like when they say that they don't have a passport but they want to go on a cruise yeah and you're like can you i mean can we just why would you want to <laughs> can't we just do it because <laughs> What happens if you are truly in a real emergency situation, not I have strep throat, which you can be seen by the doctor on board, right? Yeah. Or you need, you're need you dehydrated, you need some fluids, all that's fine. And something that can get you to the next port, but still you, yeah. but you're in the middle of the ocean and you're having a true emergency situation and the ship can't get back to port soon enough. And they have to get that helicopter to come like hover and somehow grab you. Or if you're lucky enough to be on a big enough ship that has a helipad on it, because I think that's a thing. (laughs) The helipads are a thing, but if not all, not all cruise ships have it. So they may have to do the cradle Ah. basket where they hover and, um, stressful. It's about $75,000 for that. Yeah. You buy travel insurance, it's covered, right? So these are the things we're talking about when we're like, do you want travel insurance? Right. The likelihood of you needing a a medical helicopter from a cruise ship is incredibly small. Well, depending on how old you are. (laughs) Let's not get ahead of it. Or how drunk you're going to get. (laughs) And that is one thing to keep in mind is that travel insurance is not a one size fits all. Right. So you're paying you you as a 30 something adult is are going to pay a different price then your 75, 80-year-old grandparent is going to pay. They are going to pay more because they are more likely to need to utilize these benefits than you are, just statistically. And same thing with the price of your trip. So the more your trip costs is the more 
your insurance is going to cost. So if you're traveling for 10 days, your travel insurance is going to cost you more than if you were traveling for a weekend. So we can't just say like, if you're interested in any sort of protection for your trip, it is a like specifically personalized to you and what exactly you're doing quote. It is not a blanket like, okay, well you're traveling for a week. So here's how much it's going to cost. It is, okay, so you're traveling for a week and the hotel you're staying at is costing you $400 a night and your flights cost you $2,000 and you're going on excursions that are co- like, we, you know, like it's essentially like itemized and totaled and then that's what you're being quoted against. So right, just something to keep in mind is like the bigger and more extravagant the trip is, is probably the more that it's going to cost you and also the older you are is the more it's going to cost you. But let's just say you're mid forties and you um, have two children and you're doing a $10,000 trip. It's probably going to cost you around 300 bucks, 300 to 500 is probably the average of what you're going to pay. Um, I just had a client as a family of four going on a, uh, a Royal Caribbean cruise and flights with a pre and a post night hotel all in They're at like $6,000 it came to 208 bucks. The insurance was $208 to give you reference, right? And you don't always have to, first of all, full disclaimer, Kayla and I are not licensed insurance agents. So absolutely not. not. But in (laughs) most cases, you don't even have to insure the full amount, right? So if you have a $30,000 trip, and you're like, well, I don't, I want my reimbursement to be based on 15,000, you can do that and pay less, right? You're not going to make all your money back based off of what you've spent, but you know that going up front. So it, you yeah. can ensure some of it. Um, there's really only one time when age isn't factored in. And it's sometimes when you book, when you add the insurance through a specific supplier, we'll use Disney, for example, Disney, anyone under 18 is free. doesn't matter how old the adult is. The adult is $95, right? For a yeah. Disney world vacation. So, so in those cases, it makes more sense to add add it through the supplier than going in like through a third party because the age is not factored in. Right. Yeah. Um, There's also different like levels of coverage. So then like you have, I think that travel are like like, pack and go. Like that's like a basic. Yeah. Like cover (laughs) just what you need, like for very basic, very low thresholds of reimbursement Mm -hmm. um, to like a silver tier, you know, a bronze silver and then like, platinum tier covering everything, yeah. you know, possibly getting back three times the cost of your trip based off of what is, you know, all that stuff. But um, so, right. You have options when you're purchasing, right. It's not yeah. just this and this. Um, it's like your car insurance, right? Like you have, you get to sort of set what your deductibles are for your comprehensive and your collision. And right. are you going to have a rental yeah. car? Are you not like that? It's the same type of thing where you can, sort of pick and choose and put together based on the predetermined levels, which makes the most sense for you. If you want to be reimbursed for every single slight inconvenience you have, then you're going to want that highest tier. If you only really care about like if my luggage gets lost and getting reimbursed for that, then you're probably going to want a lower tier. But the one thing that I will say that I think a lot of people don't realize is that if you have any sort of protection and you need to utilize it, if you've booked through a travel agent, it doesn't matter. You are responsible for submitting your claim. It is not like, yes, it's unfortunate. And you're going to want to like, let your travel advisor know that, Hey, this thing came up, but like at the end of the day, it is still an insurance product and you still have to be the person going through the steps of submitting that claim to insurance and all of your receipts and whatever paperwork they need, like that is out of your travel agent's hands. They are not like they can potentially maybe advocate for you a little bit, but they're not going to be able to do that process for you. And I know insurance sucks. And like anytime you have to put a claim into any sort of insurance, it's awful, but like it's worth it in the long run to get, paid out for the things that happened on your trip. (laughs) Yeah. And you mentioned even submitting the claims is really important, right? Having all of the receipts, 
and there are some nuanced things and this is what i think is off-putting for people right like um for example the 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 hurricane that was coming through central florida recently hurricane milton right Mm -hmm. some people canceled their flight or canceled their whole trip before it was even a hurricane before warnings were in place and before right and they made or their trip was a few days before and they cut it short and so sometimes in those cases that's when maybe the your travel advisor would be helpful being like well this isn't gonna you know or Mm -hmm. for example in i was just recently in europe my luggage didn't come till the next day i went out and bought some uh a, a day's worth of clothes and i did submit for reimbursement I also didn't go to, I don't know, like Gucci, not that I would even wear Gucci, <laughs> but I didn't go spend $10,000 on a one outfit, right? Like I need to hit up like Target, right? I mean, yeah. it's functional things, right? But again, mm-hmm. in those situations, you want to have all the receipts, all the um, options of like, oh, I changed my flight because I was scared. Well, no, your flight wasn't actually canceled. And so mm-hmm. you aren't going to get reimbursed, right? Like you got to, you got to really think mindfully through, through a lot of that, but, um, you know, save the receipts, a critical part of that final process when you're, when you're putting in the claims. Yeah. Um, you know what you're making me think of right now? What? That is 2020. And the, like, just you talking about the specifics of waiting, essentially wait till there's like a state of emergency or whatever that looks like. And something to keep in mind with travel protection, it doesn't cover pandemics. Like the when COVID hit and the world shut down. It did in the beginning, but once it, it did, was- It did, but it has now been worked into travel protection that there is right. not protection against those types of things. So keep in mind that there are situations that even if you have travel protection- it may not be covered. And it is so important that you look over the documentation that is sent to you before you agree to purchasing. Because again, your travel advisor or whoever you're working with is not a licensed insurance professional. They can give you an idea of what things to like be looking for and, you know, general coverage. But it's important that if there is something very specific that you are wanting to make sure is covered, you need to look through that documentation and make sure maybe you're control Fing and typing in whatever thing it is into the PDF. I don't know. But if there's something really important to you, like you think that there's going to be another pandemic and that the world is going to shut down, just know that yeah. may not be covered. <laughs> well, and I think you bring up a good point because it's, it's often when you book, when you yeah. purchase the insurance, right? So in 2020, people who had insurance before it was named by the World Health Organization as a global mm-hmm. pandemic, you were covered. After that, you nope. weren't because you were going on a trip knowingly so that there was a global pandemic going on, right? Mm-hmm. Um, same thing with pre existing conditions. That's really critical. And I know we talk with people who have some pre-existing conditions, like some pretty intense ones. Those people generally know what's going on, right? Like that that their condition could complicate their their trip. But a lot of times you can get pre-existing conditions um, covered if you book the insurance within two to three weeks of your first initial deposit. Because what they're doing, it's just like when you get hired at a new job and you get life insurance without a, um, without a you know, a, um, exam. And then <laughs> what are you trying you decide to, to add it two years later? They're like, mm, we need an exam, right? Same yeah. thing. They're, they're not going to say, um, they want to make sure you weren't like, Oh, I'm having these complications. Now let me buy my insurance and then submit a claim that yeah. all of a sudden I'm, you know, having six strokes and I can't walk and now I can't go on this hiking trip. Well, yeah, you knew, you know, depends on what, you know, how you can document that. So that's important for anybody with pre-existing conditions. The earlier you buy it, the more that's going to be covered, right? Um, Mm -hmm. You can wait up till the very last day and purchase it. It's still, but anything that happened before that is not going to be covered necessarily. Um, We talked about weather, but I want to dive a little further back in. If a hurricane comes through, if there is a winter storm and your airline has to cancel their flights or whatever it might be, the airport shuts down, they are not responsible because obviously they can't control the weather. Um, 
they are not responsible for giving you a voucher for a hotel room for, you know, doing, they'll, they'll rebook your flight and everything, but to not give you a voucher for food. So Mm -hmm. that's on you unless you have travel insurance, um, Mm -hmm. you know, in most cases. So again, think about it. If you're budgeting out a trip, think about it, add it into the budget, find out early and often what is covered, what are your options. Um, and book it, especially, you know, I would write, we recommend it even on a domestic trip, but it, I mean, in most cases, domestic trips are too, often less expensive too. So that's the price is going to yeah. be more digestible, but on an international trip. Absolutely have it. Yeah. We're silently judging you when you tell us you don't <laughs> want it. I'm going to be dead on dead serious with you. We're also scared for you because you know, we, we, we aren't going to tell you horror stories right now, but we have seen them, right? Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, people get very sick, very hurt, even die while traveling. Mm-hmm. And um, it's pretty, you know, travel insurance even covers up to like generally, depending on the plan, but like up to $10,000 to get the dead body back to the United States. Like you're probably thinking, oh my God, I didn't even realize that's going to cost money. Yeah, sure huh? is throw a dead buddy person in the plane, all of this shit. <laughs> They'll put it in the morgue on the cruise ship for you at least. They will put it in the morgue on the cruise ship. Yeah. <laughs> still, the cruise ship's probably in Florida and you have to get back home to wherever yeah. it is. And how are you going to do that? Or if you're like me, Chris knows this about me. Every time I travel, I get sick. The last time that I went to Europe, I ended up with COVID. Like, thankfully, I didn't have complications, but I know myself well enough to know that I get sick when I travel, period. That's it. I'm going on a trip in less than 60 days. I know I will get sick. It is two weeks long. I'm just like preparing for that. And I, you know, having travel insurance, traveling internationally, knowing that this is who I am as a person, it is the peace of mind for me. It is the knowing that if something happens to me, while it is stressful to get things taken care of in a country where I do not necessarily speak the language, it is good to know that I won't have to deal with the headache of paying all of this money and being out, you know, when I'm already spending tens of thousands of dollars on the trip, what's another extra couple hundred bucks to not have to pay potentially tens of thousands more dollars. Was that gonorrhea ever covered? That- <laughs> Yeah. You're so good at saying shit with a straight face. You should you should go talk to Lauren Michaels. It's actually my life dream, but we'll we'll <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead serious. <laughs> also, I uh, let's be honest, I can't be up at eleven thirty at night. I can do like Saturday morning live. Oh, one other thing I want to say we talked about at the beginning that we both have annual policies. I would say if you travel at least three times a year. Look into an annual policy instead of doing the the piece by piece uh, per trip policy. It is an option. I would say it's more economical, especially if you're traveling pretty frequently. Like if you travel for work a lot and your work doesn't like cover your travel in that way. I don't know if that's a thing that normally I don't travel a lot for work. Chris, when you traveled a lot for work, was it was there um, insurance? Yeah, there's some insurance on that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Through them. Yeah. So it's just, it's worth it to like look into an annual product. Sometimes too, depending on if, when you book and who you're booking through, you could have a cancel for any reason add on, which is a nice function for some people giving them even an additional layer of, of peace of mind, knowing that they could cancel up until the day of the trip for any reason, even if it's not covered. We talked about like fear is not a covered reason. Like, Oh, I'm afraid (laughs) of, no, it's not. Unfortunately, most times it's not covered. And so, but if you have cancel for any reason, that would be a, you could just cancel and get yeah. either some or all of your money back to, or, or a voucher for future travel. Mm-hmm. Um, so the very last thing is, but you're talking to true travel advisors who never travel without travel insurance. So take it from us experts. Yeah. Just go, but go with the insurance. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And I think that if you talk honestly to anyone who's in the travel industry, whether that's 
let's say flight attendants or travel advisors or people who work within a hotel system, like I would say 90% of us are team travel insurance. So it's definitely a thing that at the very least, get a quote and see what the coverage is. And if it's worth it to you, if you're like, no, that's not going to be me, then all right, best of luck to you. But at least look and see. See what could be covered, how much that cost is to you. I think that you will be pleasantly surprised by what is covered and how little it's costing you out of pocket when your six-year-old is sick on day one at Disneyland. And now you have to figure out how to get them to the hospital. And also they won't stop throwing up and they've now ruined their clothes. Yeah, You know, I mean, these are yeah. real life situations. They need new outfits. Yeah. All the things. It's just, it's like the little things that you don't think about. How much is it going to cost me to get, I don't want to get in a lift to take my kid to the hospital because now if if I know they're getting sick and they throw up in this person's car, now I also have to pay the cleaning fee for the lift. Like it's just, it's things like that, that like it adds up so fast and you don't realize it. So we'll step off our soapboxes now. <laughs> I should just title this soapbox episode, travel insurance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But let us know, are you a traveler that typically has travel protection? Have you, Are you out there raw dogging it without travel protection? Oof. Tell us that. Let me know how much you're typically paying out of pocket when things go wrong. I would love to know. A raw dog, really. It's really <laughs> special choice of words. The um, Yeah. Let us know. Oh. Is, it, is it more special than you saying gonorrhea? Well, I think you could get gonorrhea by raw talking. I think you're probably. (laughs) Holy (laughs) shh. Well, I've, I've, uh, (laughs) I'm so surprised. Chris is like, oh my God, I can't believe you said that to me. And that's never. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's usually I'm saying something. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Man, this was like the most serious episode we've ever had, but also like, I think this is the most I've ever laughed at a single episode. Um, Yeah, well, we talked about dead grandma and gonorrhea. Yeah. Yeah. Well. (laughs) Okay, I have to get my composure, Chris, so I can wrap up this episode. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. And until next time, let's just go. Without gonorrhea, but with travel insurance.